core premise is essentially the moral of the story. It has a very unique structure that's specific to story design and learning objectives or behavior outcomes. You know, I'm using that term synonymous, synonymously because I think you can kind of use both, but that language for having a learning objective or, or a business outcome, behavior outcome, all of those have specific languages. Those two things don't really align. It's kind of like somebody speaking Spanish and someone speaking Greek. You need to have some kind of common ground to change the very syntax of it so it lines up. And that's something that we do cover in the course because it's hard to come up with, but that's the number one thing. And so what ends up happening is if you don't have this underlying moral, you have stuff in there that's tangential, your story gets bloated, so it's far longer and more complicated than it needs to be. And what really sucks is that if you don't have anything that's very clear of what the underlying point is, learners won't notice it. They won't outright say, hey, what was the point of this? Sometimes they'll just assume it was something that you didn't intend. And so you lose control as the storyteller, which can be really problematic. They can take the opposite point in a way. Like you might tell a story to support why they need to wear their safety shoes every day. And they think that you told the story as a reason not to. This happens all the time. I mean, think of like little rhetoric and how it's spun all the time. It's the same exact story, but the way that they use the phrasing of the presentation insinuates other things. I would say that uh, the story metaphors that people use, because story really, the, the power of it is when you use the metaphor, you take it outside of an environment someone's familiar with and you abstract it so that they can suspend disbelief or suspend the reality enough to think about the problem. The metaphors are often weak or like they're too on the nose. It's like, oh, I want to talk about negotiation and I'm going to have two people in a room negotiating in a business setting. It's not the best option. Take and talk about like a, a parent putting their child to bed. That's a different context or a metaphor that people can then suspend and then relate to their personal lives. You want the learner to actively do that work of saying, how does it apply to me? And the best way to do that is through metaphor. So when people, you know, when budding storytellers or learning designers use um, story metaphors that are weak, again, it kind of gets you, it implicates you in a different way. It, it makes, it suggests that something else about your story is what I wanted to take away and it confuses people, it frustrates them too. Final thing I'll say, and this is just something I learned from a really wonderful filmmaker, one of my, my all-time favorite filmmakers. Um, he was teaching a class on on how to make a short film. And one of the assignments was, you have to use a lift as a symbol in your film. You have to use an elevator as part of your film. And this one lady goes, okay, uh, I wanna make a movie about a woman who's afraid of elevators. And he goes, how do we know she's afraid of elevators? Does she have like a medical badge that says I'm afraid of elevators? She says, no, 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 he uh, she, or she normally goes to see a doorman that lets her up, but he's not here today. And the filmmaker's like, again, how do we know that he's not there today? We've never seen him there before. So how do you establish that? And there was this really interesting dialogue that took place between them. And the summary was, when you're telling a story, it's best to do so in terms of actions and images. What do I see and what do people do? You know, advice I would recommend is think about instead of saying, uh, he was angry, you know, how can you how can you show it through a behavior? And And the beautiful thing again, is if you give this description, like, oh, he laughed at the funeral. Well, that can mean a number of things. It can mean the person is, you know, really, really broken and trying to mask their pain, their grief, or it can mean they're psychotic, or it can mean, you know, any number of other things. The audience is now doing the work to figure that out for themselves. Their emotional intelligence is engaged, what they call theory of mind. I think I know what this person's thinking. That's the real gift of a, of a storyteller.